Hello. Uh, this week, uh, we are going to learn that how we can create a map in ArcGIS Pro. So we will learn the basics of how to design the map, create a different type of the maps, and also finally, we are going to put all the map elements into our layout. So we are going to save our final uh, product as a PDF uh, document. The data we can use is are the same data we use in Lab Seven. So uh, you can access the data from your Lab 7 project. If you cannot access your Lab 7 data, you can just follow the Lab 7 tutorial, re-download the mass routing data and also publishing data from ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS uh, Living Atlas. So let's get started to create our new project. Uh, so this is our Lab 10. And we're going to save that one to our uh, OneDrive folder. And uh, once the project is ready, so I'm going to go ahead and find out my Lab 7 project, uh, which is also in my uh, OneDrive folder. So I will go to the catalog, and I'll go to computer, and find out my uh, OneDrive folder, which is under my username, OneDrive demo. And now I expand my Lab 7 folder and find out the database. Uh, so we're going to use a three data set. One is a population at the county level. So we drag that one to our uh, project. One is a population at the state level. So we drag that to our project. And uh, finally, we're going to use a mass routing data. So the, uh, the, the third layer, which is mass routing data. All right. Uh, so in this week's lab, we're going to uh, create a map that focuses on Virginia only. So let's make uh, selection. So first, we're going to select all the mass routines in Virginia. So right now, I'm going to first manually select the Virginia state. So now you can see the Virginia state has been selected. And then I will go ahead go to select by location. So where I will use the selected Virginia as the selecting feature. So Virginia state. Now you can see we're using the select Virginia as a selecting feature. And then I will use the mass routing as an input feature. OK, uh, now I'm going to apply a selection. So apply. Uh, so now if I uncheck my uh, state population and also county population, uh, so you can see that all the points in Virginia are now selected. So I'm going to export those selected feature, those points, to my lab 10 geo database so i go right click go to data and export features so you can see here we are going to export the selected features uh, i will call that one to be mass routing va and let's make sure that we are going to export all the data into our lab 10 uh, geo database all right i go ahead and let's export uh, so now let's remove the mass routing data and I just keep the mass routing in Virginia. So now you can see only the mass routing that uh, happened in Virginia are now in my uh, project. So next, I'm going to export all the state population. So here, make sure that we clear this selection for the state because we need all state population, all the states uh, for our map as well. So let's go ahead and export all the state uh, to our lab 10. So let's just name it state population and export. OK, so I'm going to remove this state population. So now we have our second data. Uh, for the county population, uh, we're going to export all states in Virginia only. So for the county, uh, because we have a field that called state name, so when we're going to export, we go to filters, and we see we find out that where the state is equal to uh, Virginia. We uh, check that uh, SQL, so that's uh, great, that's right. So now we call that one county population in Virginia. And also that's will be in our Lab 10 uh, geo database. So let's go ahead and export that data. Uh, let's remove all the counties. All right, so now we have a uh, three data set. We have county population in Virginia. We have the mass routine in Virginia. 
we also have the uh, all state that uh, in our geo database. So if we go to the project uh, geo database, so now we have those three uh, layers. So let's save our project. So that's for our uh, data collection or data uh, export. So next, we are going to create two maps and also one chart. Our first map will be a locator map. So right now, we do have a map that is open, so you can see here. So uh, let's change this one. Let's rename this one to be locator map. So for this locator map, uh, we don't need the mass shooting. We don't need county population. Um, actually, we don't need any uh, base maps. So locator map, we all just use as a reference map that we want to highlight the location of Virginia. So let's say make sure that the state layer is selected. And we go to symbology. And here we want to give them uh, unique values. So each state will have a, a different value. Let's say we want based on state name. All right. Uh, so now you can see uh, all states, they have a different color. So let's say we want to remove all of them. And we just want to add Virginia back. So let's see, go ahead, find out Virginia. So now you can see Virginia is now the only state. And then let's say we want, also want to show other values. So here we are also looking, uh, so we also have the other states, but the other states have uh, all the same color. So now you can change the colors a little bit. So for example, uh, for this color, uh, you can give it a gray color. Uh, and for Virginia, uh, you can give it a different color to highlight uh, Virginia. So for example, if I give it pink. All right, uh, so I think that's, uh, a great uh, locator map. So it shows where Virginia is located. It also gave uh, Virginia uh, uh, the, the dark red color. Uh, so it's very easy to find out where the, the state is. So let's save that locator map. Uh, next, we're going to create a semantic map where we want to show the population density in Virginia and also number of injuries in Virginia because of the mass routines. So now let's go to the map. Uh, let's say we want to create a new map. And for this map, uh, let's rename it. Uh, let's call it a symmetric map. And for this map, we are going to show the, the county po populations and also the mass routines. OK. Now, for this map, because we want to map the Virginia only, so we no longer to show the entire country. So we want to change uh, the map projection that focus on Virginia only. So let's go to the map layer properties. We go to coordinations. Uh, so for Virginia, let's use UTM. So let's go to UTM. Um, because Virginia is located in the the 17 north, uh, so I'm going to use this one, UTM, uh, 17 north. All right, so now you can see this is uh, the appropriate uh, projection for the Virginia map. All right, uh, next we're going to show, let's say first we're going to show the, the, we want to change the size of the dots to show the, the number of injuries. So let's select the mass routine, go to symbology, uh, you can use proportional symbols or you can use graduated symbols. So let's use graduated symbols. Where we want to show the number of people being injured. Uh, and you can define the number of classes. So normally we don't want more than five. So here I will use three. And uh, you can also change the different uh, data classification method. Uh, you can also change the size of the dots. For example, if I think 18 is too big. Uh, so I gave it uh, 15. And if I think 4 is too small, and I gave it 5. So uh, you can always change the size of those dots. Uh, you can also change the, the colors. So for example, if you click the dots, 
uh, you can choose uh, the symbols that you like. And also, if you go to the properties, uh, you can also change the colors. OK, so let's see. I, I'm going to use orange. All right, uh, so um, that is my uh, proportional symbol map to show the number of the injuries. And for the county population, I'm going to use the graduated colors to show the population density. So we have created population density map before. Uh, so let's create a population density map. So here I'm going to use colors, so graduated colors. Um, for the field, you can see we do have the population, total population, and we also have the area. So you have two options. You can use population, normalized by its area, where you will be showing the, the population density, which is total population divided by the area. So you can do that. However, the area is in the square meters. OK, so square meters. So you, you're looking for like number of population per square meters. Uh, so the number is uh, very, very small. So instead, we can create a new field. So let's set an uh, expression. For this field, let's call it uh, population density. And for this expression, let's say we want to use uh, the population divide by the size of the counties. And let's also times 1 million so that we are looking at the number of population per square kilometers, not uh, per square meters, per square kilometers. So we click OK. All right. Um, and now you can also, of course, change the classification method and also the number of classes uh, and also the colors. So for example, I will use, uh, let's say I want to use a uh, a blue color okay to show the population density and uh, finally you can also customize the format of the labels because I think um, we have too many decimals so I will go to the advanced uh, prop options go to format the labels so I think uh, I will just give it two decimals okay so here we can see the population density and then we have the uh, mass shooting. So let's rename the layer. So mass shooting in VA. And for the second layer, uh, let's call it county VA. Or you can call it a VA county. And next, uh, this is our uh, major map. So let's say we want to also change a different base map. So here, I, for example, I, I don't like the default base map. Uh, I'm going to go to the map, base map. So uh, let's say I want the darker green map. So I'm going to choose that one. Uh, so when you choose a different uh, base maps, sometimes they have the labels. Uh, so if you think the labels are not necessary, especially now, I don't think we need those labels. So you can just turn off the labels. Okay, so by doing that, you can just show the map. All right, so let's save this map. And our final um, visualization will be a chart. So for example, we want to see um, the, uh, the different number of injuries uh, by months, so we can create a, a calendar heat chart. So let's go ahead and find out the layer that contains the data, which is a mass shooting. We right click and let's create a chart. And this one, I'm, this time I'm going to create a calendar heat chart. And for that chart, uh, for the date, we well, will use instant date. For these aggregations, I want to use a sum of the injuries. OK, so the sum of the injuries. Uh, you can also choose the classifications. And for the colors, so uh, you can also choose the different colors. Normally, I would recommend use a color that uh, that is, uh, so if, for example, uh, to be consistent. So for example, uh, now I'm using the orange color to show the number of injuries on the map. 
So on the chart, I will also use something that's similar to the orange color. So probably uh, this one. All right, and for the no values, uh, I will leave that to be no color. Okay, uh, so that is my chart. Um, and let's again uh, save this chart. Okay, so that's all of our maps. So we have the locator map, which is a very simple one, just show where the Virginia is. Uh, we have this semantic map where we show the population density and also number of injuries. Uh, so basically, we can tell that uh, counties with high population density tend to have more injuries. So you can see a lot of those uh, mastery injuries are occurred uh, in the counties where the population density is high. Okay, um, And also we can see the patterns of the injuries uh, per month and also months of the day. So we see that in June and uh, June, July, so we have more injuries. All right, so our next step is that we're going to combine all those elements into our a single layout. So let's go to insert. So instead of to insert a new map, and we're going to insert a layout. A layout is a, is a kind of the final stage where you can combine multiple elements together. So let's go to insert. And you can choose the size of your layout, especially you want to print out your map. So choose, uh, choosing the right size is uh, very important. So in our case, we just want to save this as a PDF document. So I'm going to use this letter, the landscape. Uh, I'm going to close the chart to save more space. OK, uh, so now uh, before we insert any elements, so I think it might be a good idea that you, you need to have a very general idea that how you want to design your layout. So for example, I want this section to be my uh, title of the map. Uh, this section will be where I want to put the locator map. And this is a section where I want to print my semantic map. And this is a section that I want to put my uh, calendar, so the chart. I also want to provide some text message, for example, the author information, the data source, uh, and also projection information that I use, for example. Uh, so I want to put that here. So one thing we can do is that we can add those uh, guidelines. So uh, you can use the guidelines to indicate uh, the range of your map. So for example, here, this is a guideline that I will. So this is the range where I will put my locate map and also my uh, chart. Okay, uh, let's add some guidelines. And this will be the section that I will put my title. And this will be the section that I will put my locate map. And this will be the uh, section that I will put my semantic map. And let's also see the calendar. So. Uh, OK, so probably I will put my calendar here. Uh, this might be too small, so uh, let's put it larger. OK, all right. Uh, so now that is a, a very basic, uh, simple uh, general idea that how I want to place my map elements. All right, so next, let's first let's add a title. So title, which will be a text. So you can add a text here. Uh, you can just click the text, and now you can drag uh the text box and you can type so the title i will talk it is mass shooting in va okay and you click text go to text uh, you can change uh the font uh the size so let's say make it that's probably too small okay and Uh, let's see we want to use okay uh, so that is my uh, title and I'm going to, let's keep saving our uh, project next let's add our locate map uh, so locate map will be placed here so go to map frame so here you can see my locate map 
and also my semantic map. So I'm going to use locate map. And the, the shape of the map, so I can choose a circle. Okay, so I will draw a circle. Okay, that's probably. Uh, okay, and now you can see the map is not showing the entire country, right? So it just shows uh, the uh, this part. So not the, uh, not the entire country, and also Virginia is not even in that view. So what we can do is that we can right click uh, the map frame and then activate. So now you can just use your middle button of your mouse to zoom in, zoom out, or you can just uh, manually drag the map so that you can put, put that one into a location that you like. And then you go to layout, you can close activation. Okay, so now you can see I, I just adjust the map position, so I, I want to see where the, the Virginia is. And the next, you can uh, tell the direction of the map so there are two ways that you can add directions. So one is you can add a north arrow. Another one is that you can add grid. So for the, uh, such kind of small scale map, normally we will choose a grid. So you can choose a different type of the grid. Uh, I will use this one. Okay, so now you can see it's a very nice uh, grid that tells the directions, which is a north and which is a south. Uh, so that's for my locator map. And uh, for this one, I don't think a legend is necessary because uh, I just want to tell where the Virginia is. Um, uh, and I also do not use a do not use a scale bar because the grid also tell the size uh, information. All right. Uh, next, I'm going to bring my semantic map, which is my the major topic. And for this one, uh, I definitely want that to be a rectangle. Uh, let me put the map here. Okay, and again, if you want to adjust the size or the locations, you can just reactivate uh, the map. And then we just close activation. So this is where, where, uh, where I want to put my map. And let's zoom in, see if they overlap with each other. So if yes, probably I need to Put this one a little bit smaller. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so now for this map, uh, we do need some legend, uh, some other map elements. So let's drag it a little bit tiny. Okay. Uh, so for example, first we need to tell the direction. So for this large scale map, uh, we can use a north arrow. Uh, you can choose uh, the north arrow that you like. Uh, so for example, I will use this one. I will place where I want that to be placed. Okay, and uh, you can go to change the properties of the north arrow. For example, let's say we want to use the different colors. Um, and also, you can choose whether you want to use a true north or map north, etc. Okay, so um, that is for my uh, north arrow. And normally, we also need the legend. Uh, and also um, the scale bar uh, for our uh, map. So let's go back to the insert. Uh, so this time, let's add a scale bar. So you can, again, choose a different type of the scale bars. Um, so I prefer using uh, kilometers. So uh, probably I will use uh, this one. And I think my scale bar, I will put that one right here. OK, so that's a scale bar. And of course, you can choose uh, uh, the properties. So for example, I want that one to be uh, white because I'm using a, a dark uh, base map. I want the width to be uh, that. And also the, for the colors of the text, I also want that to be white. Um, OK, and that is the scale bar. Uh, for the scale bar, uh, if you go to design, and it is very important that when you choose the, the divisions, uh, you you want you want to make the division to be easier to compare. So, for example, you want that to be whole number like 100, 200, and 400. So this is perfect. Uh, what you don't want is that you have some uh, 
a very awkward number like this one. So uh, 62.5. Okay, so that is a really an awkward division net for the scale bar. So you don't want scale bar like that. So uh, let me change my scale bar uh, to be whole numbers. Okay, uh, you can also choose the divisions, for example, uh, the number of the subdivisions. Okay. Um, so now the number of the subdivisions. So instead, uh, so now I have three, uh, I have five, and also you can choose the divisions. Okay, three, four. All right, so, okay. Again, so uh, generally, again, the, the sum of the rule is that you want the divisions uh, to be a whole number, like uh, 10, 20, 50, something like that, so that it's easier to compare. Okay, so you don't want some very random uh, awkward number like 12, 13, uh, etc. All right, and uh, my last item for this map will be a legend. So let's go ahead and add a legend. And of course, you can choose a different type of the legend. So uh, I'm going to use uh, the default one. I'm going to bring my legend here. Um, so for the legend, uh, so similarly, you can choose the colors. So for example, I want that to be uh, white. Uh, you can also change the size. Okay, for all the items. Um, and also you can always change the different uh, type of the legend. And also in addition to uh, the properties here, uh, you can also have the more controls of the legend in this uh, on the right side. So where you can see the name, do you want to show the name of the legend? Um, show the title, okay, and and also you have more controls like border. Do you want a border, uh, etc. And also for the text symbols, etc. So you you will have a, a lot of choice options to to decide how your legend will look like. All right, so I'm happy with my legend now. Uh, probably it's uh it's too big, <laughs> but I think that's okay. Okay, uh, next I'm going to insert my chart. So the chart will be here. Uh, of course, you can also insert the, the tables uh, if you like. So I'm going to insert a chart. So now you can see I have the, the calendar heat map. Uh, I'm going to put that on here. So probably this chart is, uh, this is too small for my chart. Okay. Um, uh, this is not a good example uh, for my chart because that's, uh, that's too small. Um, let's see, let's move my map a little bit. Um, and also put the chart. Okay. Um, and let's also bring this one. Okay, so I just changed this one to be a longer so that we are able to see uh, the entire chart. Uh, sometimes if you need to change uh, like the element within the chart, uh, you can go back, let's save my uh, project. You can go back to the chart, open it. Uh, so you can change the properties here. So for example here, I want to change the title. I think the, uh, the title is too long. Uh, so I go to the uh, chart um, uh, properties and I choose the chart to be a uh, shorter title. So now if I go back, close the chart. So now you can see here uh, uh, the chart title has been updated. So we can always go back and change our visualizations. All right, uh, so that's our chart. Uh, our final part will be the text message. So uh, in, in addition to 
say let's insert the title like this we can also sometimes like provide additional information uh, so for example let me just put that a little bit smaller uh, for example we can add our um, data source so here you can type the data source so uh, so the data that we downloaded is from the gun violence archive so and you can also provide the the URL so I'm going to ignore the URL so and also uh, sensors website okay so find some data source uh, you can also provide your author information Okay, so you can type your name uh, if you like. Um, and also, you can also uh, type other uh, uh, information that you, you think that is important, so that, that those will be the text message. And of course, you can change the size okay, uh, for those text message. Um, so that's one type of the text message. Uh, we can also insert some we call that dynamic text. So those are the text that is will be the attributes. So for example, if you provided credits or the description in your uh, project, uh, so those will be inserted here. And sometimes, for example, if you want to also provide the, the mental data, uh, the scale in a text format, and you can also do that, and also map unit, uh, etc. Uh, so let's say, for example, let's say I wanted to provide the, the spatial information. So I'm going to drag that here. And you can see here it has a lot of spatial information. Um, let me remove that. So see, I'm going to add spatial information for this map. So make sure this map is selected. Uh, let's add a spatial information. OK. And for this map, we can see we are using the UTM. Uh, however, so we have too many items. So if you double click, um, uh, you can manually delete uh, those items. Or what you can also do is that you can just select this one, uh, go to the items. Or you can also delete the items from here. So for example, I just want the, the name. So uh, I don't want the other. Uh, information. I just want the projection name. Okay, so now you can see that is a piece that we used uh, for this map. All right, and lastly, so if you like, uh, you can also add a, a neat line. Uh, so just a rectangle that uh, include everything. So I'm going to add a rectangle here. All right, so I think that's our final map. So let's say we don't want to see the guidelines. So that's how our uh, final map will look like. Uh, so from here, you can share your map. So you can upload that one to uh, ArcGIS Online. Or you can print your map. Or you can just export your map. So let's say we're going to save that as a PDF document. OK, uh, let's see, export. Okay, and this is our uh, final map. So we have the title, we have the locator map, uh, we have the thematic map, where we have the north arrows, a legend, uh, scale bar. We also have the chart, and also we also have other information like data source, authors' information, and also spatial uh, reference.